the dangers of using marijuana? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Gives you like a rapid um, heartbeat. Smoker's cough. I'm sure it has some effect on your uh, brain function, memory. I don't know, is there something unhealthy about moving slowly? It's not good for you. You're not fully conscientious of what you're doing. Thicken some membranes in your brain or something. Well, it's been science. I guess it's, I get. I'm, I'm being told it's been scientifically proven that marijuana kills your your brain cells. Ah, uh, that's the one I remember. Marijuana kills brain cells. I thought the same thing. You know, I didn't start smoking pot until about five years ago. I thought pot made you stupid. You know, I bought into it just as much as anybody did. I realized when I was like 30 years old that I was tricked. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. 1974, the Heath Tulin study. Ronald Reagan announces, the most reliable scientific sources say permanent brain damage is one of the inevitable results of the use of marijuana. Monkeys pumped full of marijuana, apparently 30 joints a day, had begun to atrophy and die after 90 days. Brain damage was determined after counting the dead brain cells of both monkeys who had been subjected to the marijuana and ones who had not. This study became the foundation of the government and other special interest groups claim that marijuana kills brain cells. Here's what they didn't tell you. After six years of requests, how the study was conducted was finally revealed. Instead of administering 30 joints a day for one year, Dr. Heath used a method of pumping 63 Colombian strength joints through a gas mask within five minutes over three months. They suffocated the monkeys. What they did is they put these gas masks basically on their face and they pumped pot into it, but without additional oxygen. So after X amount of time, the brain shut down. Well, if you suffocate, the first thing that's going to happen is your brain cells are going to die with lack of oxygen. So what they did is they suffocated the monkey, showed all these dead brain cells, and then, uh, then went on to associate it by saying that cannabis use causes your brain cells to die. And how many people, not knowing the origin of the study, have gone on to quote it and record it. And now people believe it. Studies since have shown no signs of any brain cell damage. In 2005, new research suggested that marijuana could possibly stimulate brain cell growth. That study hasn't received the same attention. Another common belief, marijuana causes lung cancer. In the 1999 study by the Institute of Medicine that was paid for by the United States government, they had to use words like may and uh, should cause cancer. We've been hearing for years them trying to say that it causes lung cancer and we say, really, that's interesting because you can't even show us one case of cancer being caused by cannabis use alone. You definitely have to do it moderately because it does paralyze the cilia, but if it's not radioactive, you're probably not going to get cancer from it. Smoking it can be harmful because of, of the, the properties of smoke. Not as a result of anything in the cannabis plant, but because they're intaking heated plant matter into their lungs. People said, well, you don't know, we haven't been smoking it long enough. Look what uh, happened with cigarettes. We've had about four decades, or more than four decades of experience. If this were gonna show up, it should have shown up by now. Finally, a study came out just in the last month verifying that cannabis smoke does not cause cancer. It's different than nicotine. And the elements in the tobacco smoke do cause cancer, and the elements in the marijuana don't. There's no cases of marijuana-only smokers getting brown lung? syndrome. There's no cases of marijuana-only smokers getting emphysema. Strange for a plant that's so dangerous. How come none of that? Marijuana is as bad for you or worse than tobacco? Impossible. If they had the evidence, they'd be putting emaciated bodies or emphysema, lung cancer, black lungs. They would be parading them throughout the media. They don't have one. Yet people somehow rather think that it might cause the same thing. In fact, if you look at the straight deaths from substances, a different type of picture starts to appear. The number one killer in the country? It beat out AIDS, heroin, crack, cocaine, alcohol, car accidents, fire, and murder combined. Tobacco. That's a nasty, dirty thing to say, son. A lovely, pure white cigarette causing cancer. It gets me right here. <laughs> With an average of 430,000 deaths per year, considering it's a number one killer, it's interesting to know that tobacco receives government subsidies and is grown with radioactive fertilizer. Now get out there and sell cigarettes! Number two on the list? If we don't include poor diet and physical inactivity, with well over 85,000 deaths a year, alcohol. As we look much further down the list, there are others that may surprise you.
caffeine comes in with one to 10,000 deaths a year. And some of our most popular pain relievers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin, still make an appearance with over 7,500 deaths annually. Where does marijuana lie in this? What kind of staggering number do we find? I don't know. 50,000? 250,000? 300,000? For marijuana, I'd probably say then 80,000. I would say it would be hundreds of billions. Get ready for it. Here it comes. There are no deaths from cannabis use anywhere. You can't find one. In 10,000 years of known use of marijuana, there's never been a single death attributed to marijuana. There's 400,000 deaths in America alone every year that are directly attributed to tobacco. I've heard that you have to smoke something like 15,000 joints in 20 minutes to get a toxic amount of Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. I challenge anybody to do that. And even in the animal studies where people have loaded the animals up with doses that would be hundreds of times what a human could possibly be exposed to, I, no, the animals don't die. The LD50 seems to be astronomical. I mean, you can die from ingesting too much aspirin. You can die from ingesting too much coffee. The drug warriors who say we have to protect society, save these people, are being just a little bit disingenuous. Not one university or medical facility has ever recorded a single death directly attributed to marijuana. But never mind that. There's other problems, other reasons to fear it. Take addiction, for example. There are more kids in addiction clinics for marijuana than any other substance. This must mean that marijuana is the most addictive substance today. It's undoubtedly true that there are more uh, teenagers and kids in treatment for marijuana than all the other drugs combined. What the DEA never tells you is why that's true. A kid is caught possessing or smoking marijuana. He's taken to court. He's given a choice. Either you, you know, some horrible penalty or you go to a treatment center. Obviously chooses to go to treatment and goes to treatment there, he's considered an addict. But then the DEA gets the point of that stat and say, look at all these kids in treatment for marijuana. God, it must be because today's marijuana is not the marijuana that your parents were smoking. As far as I understand, only 3% of the people in treatment for marijuana are there voluntarily. The other 97% were told to by their guardian or told to by judge. You can choose between jail or treatment. And a lot of people choose treatment. It provides no basis for speaking about addiction. Anybody who is at all sophisticated about marijuana would rate them the way two researchers were asked to rate drugs in order of addiction. Nicotine was one, alcohol was two, then heroin, then cocaine, and then coffee, and then marijuana. There may have been a couple of other drugs, but marijuana was at the very bottom, uh, below coffee. This narcotic, unlike the opiates, the synthetics, and cocaine, is non-addictive. What do you mean by non-addictive? By non-addictive, it is meant that the user of marijuana, when deprived of the drug, will not experience the agonies of withdrawal. It is habituating, but its use can be discontinued. Then what is